Hi guys, uh, welcome back to the Terriers Talk. It is episode 14 and the first of the 21-22 season weekly review. Uh, obviously with the preview last week and there's actually quite a lot to talk about this week. Two incomings, two outgoings, uh, a win and uh, talk about the next game which is two days away from us yeah. right now, one day away from when you'll be seeing this. But yeah, let, I think we should just jump right into it because about two hours after we uh, finished recording last time, uh, Daniel, Dan Elton, sorry, Sinani was announced as a Huddersfield Town player on loan from Norwich City with an option to buy. And it was something we knew was happening. We talked about it fairly in depth in the last video, but we were sort of teetering around it just to be safe. But Jay, I'll sort of let you um, talk about the signing, what he sort of can bring to the team. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant signing. Um, you could see from when we announced him, all the Norwich fans were um, praising him quite a bit. Um, I think he offers that injection and energy to our side. Um, I think he's quite a versatile player. He can play through the middle, he can play out on the right, and he can play up top. Um, and I think that's something we've been we've been missing, um, a player who can really do whatever they want and just float. Um, and it's quite promising that it is um, an option to buy. I think that's a great bit of a, um, business from the board because quite often with our loan players, we've found that we've uh, fallen in love with them and then we have to let them go. And I hope uh, this is a love story and I hope it does continue. Um, he did get a few touches of the ball, I think, uh, when he came on in the 90th minute at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, I think he was slipped through uh, by Sorber, but he was unfortunately offside. Um, but he did slot away a penalty and it was a beautiful penalty. He was, I mean, from what I've seen from highlights, never in doubt. Side netting. Uh, and he's loved already because he scored a penalty at Hillsborough in a win. Um, I think it's great stuff. I mean, anything to add to that, Ben? Uh, yeah, sorry about that little technical difficulty there, but uh, just to add to what Jay said, um, Sinani on the Sunday was, he showed a glimpse of what he's going to offer to Huddersfield to even in the short period of actual playing time that he actually had. Um, he looked to get into those spaces that the strikers were, Believing him, and that's something that we're gonna we're gonna need a lot of this season, given the fact that we don't really have any players um, in that kind of central forward role that are gonna push you into those spaces that Sinani was able to do um, very very well on Sunday. I may say, uh, yeah, the Sauber Thomas chance uh, the pass was offside, but it just kind of showed the the willingness and the capability to get into that those kind of spaces, and the fact that he also wanted to be there rather than it just being like a, a kind of he was there out of pocket. It was kind of he was there because he wanted to be there and he wanted to have that chance. Not to touch too much on the Sheffield Wednesday game because I'm sure we'll get onto that later, but a signing from Sheffield Wednesday, well, not from Sheffield Wednesday, but a departure from Sheffield Wednesday that has now joined us, um, Tom Lees. Um, it's a signing that at the start of the window, uh, I think a lot of us would be quite against in the fact that if it was uh, right at the start, then it's it's kind of potentially lacking an upgrade on last season. However, now that we've got Colwell and Matty Pearson, um, it's, it's depth and it's experience. Uh, 400 games in the championship he's played. Um, and it just it, it's just a real quality uh, add-on to what we've got already. We've got a lot of young defenders in the likes of Romani Edmonds, Green, Critchlow Noble, um, just to name a few. And they obviously had Keogh last season, Stearman, even Elphick. Um, who are great role models in the in the dressing room. However, they've all parted um, ways with the club. So the fact that we've now got another experienced player that will step into the defence as well that is still only thirty, and I mean it just it, it makes a, it makes sense for everyone at the club really. Um, Jack, what would you really say about Tom Lees? Yeah, I, I agree. First and foremost, I definitely agree with all of that, as you say behind the likes of Pearson, Starr, well, I would say Colwell, but he's not exactly a senior option, is he? Uh, we only really had Critchlow and we did have uh, Romani Edmonds-Green. Obviously, Vallejo could step in there as well. Um, Ollie Turton, who can play in a three as well. But uh, yeah, uh, to get him in is a really good, solid bit of business. I mean, on face value, is he really a, a centre-half that plays in a possession-based side? No, probably not. But I was saying... Um, to someone, a lot of our failure last season, it did come through Richard Keogh a lot, was sort of failure to know when to just get rid 
Just, it's, it's simple enough. You can you can play the nicest football you want, but if you can't defend the ball and get rid of the ball, you know, I think Matty Pearson will bring a real hybrid of that. First of all, he's shown he's got ability on the ball already, which we weren't necessarily told about. But um, you know, to get in some more solid defenders who want to defend is is good for me. Uh, I don't think he'll play that much anyway. To be perfectly honest, I think he's behind Pearson in the pecking order. Uh, in that right centre half role in the team, so yeah, and it's allowed Romani to go and get a good season, which we'll touch on a little bit later, I'm sure. But um, yeah, I think now's the time to talk about the opening day of the 21-22 uh, season away at Hillsborough. Um, myself and Ben were there, obviously. Jay couldn't make this one, uh, but it was it was um, it was really good to be back. First of all, it was yeah, it was somewhat special. Uh, I think it's very fair to say that uh, town fans took over. Um, you know, it was just really nice to be part of it. But we'll get on to the football inside. And I think uh, we started the best, definitely. I think we were the better side throughout. But there, it was clear from minute one that there was a real divide in terms of the work rate and the quality of, even the quality of passing, the pressing. Um, so, yeah, it was it was quite promising to see. There was the first half was a bit dull. I think I'll let Ben sort of talk about it as he was actually at the game. He's probably seen more of it. It was a bit dull in the first half, wasn't it? Ben, not really that much to talk about. Yeah, I mean the first half I think was just kind of it was it was almost like a chemistry building exercise yeah. uh, within the squad. It was it kind of it not to take anything away from uh, the game at all, but it was kind of like a training game. Both sides weren't really in the game. It was just kind of both sides were warming up to the actual the teammates and it was just trying to take control of the tempo which I don't think either side really took um too much of um in the first half I think a, a massively vital player to the to the actual taking control of the tempo was Scott I um in the first half you could kind of tell he was he was trying to play those passes and um, take control of the ball and take control of the game which is something that Carol Lighting did a lot last season and whilst um Obviously, we haven't seen him do it in the championship. The Sheffield Wednesday side that they played was a very, very strong side that, to be honest, you wouldn't expect to uh, see against potentially a lower-end championship side, to be honest, because it is filled with quality. Um, the likes of Callum Patterson, uh, the likes of Barry Bannon, um, just all filtering through uh, who I think will tear apart League One this season yeah. um, because they did hold us. Um, whether that's a case of we weren't quality, on the day or, or whatever reason you, you do want to say for it, it, it was a very strong case forward that Sheffield Wednesday held us to that nil-nil because, let's be honest, there were there were a lot of chances um, going into the second half. You know, a player that really shocked me was Danny Ward. Um, last season wasn't the best. I think we've all had our say on Danny Ward last season, whether it's been on air or on social media. And I know town fans for definitely have not been short for words upon Danny Ward uh, since he returned back to the John Smith Stadium. Um, but he ran for every single ball on Sunday and that's something that we're going to need a lot of this season because obviously Fraser Campbell's getting on a bit as well um, and to have two strikers that will be playing that role uh, rather than just relying on Campbell and then um, somebody coming off the bench late on, uh, it, it's going to be it, it's going to be able to keep up that intensity for a full 90 minutes if needs be in the likes of Fraser Campbell and Danny Ward however we also have that option in Jordan Rhodes um, who dare I say changed the game um, when he came on um, obviously we'll, we'll touch on that bit a bit later um, a player that really impressed me as well uh, Sorba Thomas obviously we spoke about him in the preview Jack just how good was he on, Saturday, on Sunday yeah, um, I think I came under a little bit of fire, not not in a bad way. Uh, I did a team prediction and didn't start him, and it, it was it was it it, it, turned, it turned out to be true. Obviously, with Dwayne on getting the nod, but he um, he came on and he uh, did really well. Uh, he looked really, really just quality in them wide areas. Sometimes I feel you got a bit lucky, but sometimes that's just what you need as a player, and it's, he's got that drive. So he'd, uh, he'd try to take it around a player, it'd uh, hit him, but he'd be there winning um, the rebound. Um, I think one thing to touch on is that that chance where he's played clean through. Uh, he's got an age to strike the ball, could do it outside the box. It's a great tackle from Barry Bannon, but I think that's just a little bit of 
bit of game sense, bit of knowledge that he's, he's going to pick up and he's going to learn from that, that he could maybe strike that ball a little bit earlier. But yeah, it was very good. There was a um, good mate of ours, Declan, tweeted out a video of him in with his little scorpion flick for no reason, which was fantastic. And it just shows he's got a bit, he's got confidence. And um, I think he'll probably get the nod at Derby. I think he'll probably get his start. I think he deserves it personally. Uh, but yeah, it was fantastic. And another, um, I don't know, we're just going on individuals. I'm going to keep that trend going. But I'm going to pick on two here, two in the same position, Levi Colwell and Matty Pearson. Could be the start of something beautiful, that partnership. Um, yeah. There was one moment in particular, I want to say it was Callum Patterson, and they'd been played through and Matty Pearson just sort of stood there and won the ball and it was, it was brilliant. <laughs> he, just, he just, yeah, after um, last season's sort of woes with centre halves, you've got two centre halves who can really play the ball, really strong. Levi Colwell didn't lose a header. It's a, someone like Callum Patterson who's a nightmare to play against. He's a nightmare to watch. I can't imagine what he's like to play against. But um, yeah, he, they both look utterly phenomenal in that game. And it's first game, it's early doors, but I think it really could be a special sort of partnership. But um, I think there's one more uh, individual performer, and Jay hasn't spoken yet, but I'm sure he's seen enough of the game to speak on Lewis O'Brien and just how well he played. He looked like the Lewis O'Brien of old, didn't he? Yeah, uh, and unfortunately that performance was under the watchful eyes of uh, one Marcelo Bielsa. Um, Lewis is a wanted man, uh, and you could tell why. I saw, I think it was one of the uh, Huddersfield Town staff accounts, and I'm not quite sure who it was, posted his match performance, and it was incredible. It was like the Duracell bunny we used to see uh, in 2019. It was, I mean, he's it's, it's just a motor, isn't he? he like... On a good day, he doesn't stop, uh, and I get the sense that it it was exactly that at Hillsborough, um, and I think that's really what we kind of uh, had been missing. Um, he's a star boy. Um, I think sooner rather than later he will depart for a higher level of football, um, and if it's the right fee, then happy days. Uh, I think we've already had this conversation. Um, I think the key thing is for Lewis to go and flourish. Um, and he'll always be known as, you know, main Huddersfield Academy boy. Um, would I like to see him go? Yes and no. Yes, because the football has to develop. Uh, I think we'll, we will reap some rewards from that uh, financially and um, our reputation for having a good academy. Uh, and no, just because he's a quality outfit uh, and he just makes everything tick. Um I mean, enough of Lewis and on to uh, the real hero. Penalty shootout, pink shirt, Hillsborough, deja vu, isn't it? Lee Nichols. Um, I think when Lee came in, people weren't very sure about what to think. Um, I think quite a few, sorry, as a weak signing, um, came out of nowhere and no one really knew who he was. Um, I remember watching him against Burnley in the FA Cup at about... February or March time, it was ages ago. Um, and that's all really I've heard of him. But I think every single Huddersfield Town fan knows his name after Sunday's antics. No pressure, that's what he said. He said, uh, after he said the two penalties, I think uh, it was one of the social media uh, department asked him, do you feel pressure? And he said, no, I love penalties. That's what we need. Uh, and that brings me uh, to the thought that he probably will be on number one. And to be honest, and this is nothing against Ryan Schofield, I hope it is, and I hope he is, because he just oozes confidence. And you can tell he is a calm head on two very assured uh, shoulders. That's a bit of a mouthful. I mean, Jack, Ben, how good was it to see uh, the Danny Ward 2.0 on Sunday? Yeah, I think I think it was, um, I think it was something that... Um, Whilst we can always hope that it happens, I think nobody really wanted it to go to penalties. I think there was always that kind of deep down, I, w- I won't mind it going to penalties, just as a as a, a rewind to, to that season where we went up. Um, but it, it, it was absolutely brilliant in that shootout. Um, he, just, he just has that confidence. And I think that's something that Schofield lacks at the moment, which is nothing against Schofield. Um I think it's just a case of he's been thrown in the deep end. Um, again, not a fault of Schofield or anybody at the club. I think it was just a case he was thrown at the deep end. He's had 
a few brilliant games last season. And then I think towards the end of last season, his confidence dropped. Um, and I think Lee Nichols is somebody that now we have an established number one in between the sticks now. And it's, it's somebody with experience. Um, he might not have played at this level before, but I think he's, he's definitely somebody that has proved now that he can and he's not going to face the pressure of playing at this level. Um, he, his distribution was brilliant. Um, and that's something that I think we've all stated about Ryan Schofield in the past, um, that distribution-wise, Schofield isn't top-notch, which is something that we all know. Um, Shot-stopping-wise, he's, he's, dare I say, one of the best in the league, potentially. Yeah. Um, but his distribution just takes him down as a keeper, whereas I think Lee Nichols is potentially the perfect mix between the two. Um, his distribution is brilliant and he, he every single time he was on the ball, whether that was uh, with his feet or the ball at his hands, I think um, every time the, the, the distribution was perfect in terms of where to play it and it got us playing out from the back, which is something that um, we need to see. Um, at half-time, I, I, I came out and I was in the, uh, the concourse and I said that the fundamentals were all there for what we need this season. Everything was... I lost oh, there. Uh, oh, no, uh, he's back. Back. I'm back. I'm back, Heather. Um, <laughs> uh, he says my internet connection's unstable, but um, the passing was there. Um, just the actual, the the this the tempo was there, and it just the core fundamentals were there. I think this season we will get caught out a lot of the back um, against fast forwards, but when you're playing as open and as high pressing football that Carlos is trying to play this season, I think that's going to be a given. Um, but having somebody like Lee Nichols between the sticks means that we are going to be okay and that the chance of um, us keeping out a lot more than we did last season, I think they are automatically going to be massively, massively heightened in the fact that we now have an established number one. I mean, Jack, would you would you agree with that or do you think that potentially we might have needed to uh, to see a few more things in pre-season as to, to the actual the master plan for Carlos Carbron this season? Um. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do agree with everything you said there, to be honest, especially the thing about fundamentals. I think you're absolutely spot on. I had a similar conversation with a good mate of mine at Wednesday. Uh, just that we need, uh, the exact thing I said was everything's there, we just need that spark. Um, and that spark could be Sinan, it could be someone else who comes in later in the window, who knows. But um, yeah, uh, it, there, there is something there. Uh, and as you say, we are going to get caught out a lot, and that is exactly what we were promised. Uh, fast, uh, attacking football we might not always win but we'll give it our best um, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm down for that I think that could, that's something I'm on board with it's something I believe in uh, maybe that's blind optimism but it's something I genuinely believe that we can and we will do uh, but yeah Lee Nichols I think we'll, we'll get this a regular thing going we did it a little bit but Lee Nichols is definitely the Terriers talk star of the week uh, yeah. this week yeah. absolutely yeah, Scott High came in close second but um, <laughs> just uh, just quickly, the, the final thing on Wednesday, we talked about one penalty hero, there's four others to talk about. Um, in Jordan Rhodes, Dan Elstinani, uh, Lewis O'Brien, and the other one, help me out here, I'm forgetting. Salva Thomas. Salva Thomas, Salva Thomas, yeah. Salva Thomas. Sorry, if, uh, I hope Salva's not watching this, why would he be? But um, <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they were all great penalties. Uh, Jordan, I've been banging on about it all week. The way he strikes a football, it, oh. It is it's just gorgeous. Um, yeah, Sabers, the little run up. I'm not a great fan of that. It makes me feel a bit nervous, but you know, job done. Uh, Sinani, as Jay said, side netting can't go wrong. Confident, didn't look like missing. And Lewis or Brian, <laughs> who knew he had that in him? But uh, yeah, what a penalty! It was right under the bar, brilliant. But yeah, um, it couldn't have happened a better way winning at Hillsborough, could it, Ben? No, nah, I don't think it could have. I think. It was the the perfect result for us. Um, it just had everything that it needed to. And I mean, the the scenes at full time, um, the fan base is is behind the team, and you could very much tell that throughout the ninety minutes. But just at the, at the end of that penalty shootout, people hugging each other again, and it's just little things like that that people haven't been able to do now for what eighteen months. And yeah. it's, it just shows that the fan base is so closely knitted again, and that they will play a massive part in in this season, however we do do. Um, and I mean, on the pitch as well, players just run into each other. Um, 
obviously the news broke. I think I, I was on the way back to the train station um, that Marcelo Bielsa had been spotted uh, at the game um, amongst the interest. Uh, news had broke out that morning through uh, Alan Nixon, I think it was, um, that Leeds had submitted um, bids for O'Brien uh, or player exchanges. Um, but the town are rolling out for about 10 million. Uh, and I believe, I think it was today or yesterday uh, or the day before when you're seeing this, um, that, that uh, they've put in another bid or something and it's been rejected. Um, so we're going to hold that and uh, see that uh, Carlos in his press conference said that um, obviously he's a key player and that uh, he will be in whatever we do going forward. Um, but to touch on two confirmed departures, um, first of all, Romani Edmonds Green, who we are all massive fans of. Um, Jack, Jay, do you think it's a, a good move for uh, Romani? Or do you think that potentially staying at the town front of the season could have been um, the right option for him? Um, I think if you asked me that question last season, um, I'd say the second option you have to stay because who else was there? Um, we had really no depth. Um, this season, yeah, good luck to him because we've got, and, and I'm fully confident, we've got the depth needed. Like Jack said, Turton can play uh, in a back three if needed. And that's that's really when, or if we're clutching at straws. Um, no, I think it's a great move and just look what alone did uh, Rotherham to Josh Karama came back and he's uh, turning defences into absolute nobodies really. Um, no, I think it's really good. Um, all the signs point towards Romani getting regular football. Uh, he's a very talented player. I think he's very versatile. I mean, we saw that where he popped up on the right wing and scored against Reading on the last day. Um, I'm sure, Jack, you feel the same. Yeah, 100%. I think... I'm a massive, massive fan of Romani. I think he's the future of the Town Football Club, especially at the back. Uh, since his uh, man of the match display at Charlton, uh, obviously goal scorer Matty Daly as well. We'll touch on in a minute. But um, yeah, I think he's, he's a great player. He's not there yet. I think there was definitely flaws in his game last season. Yeah, and I think that is by and large why we've brought in Lees and loaned out Edmonds Green. I'm sure some people would have definitely liked to keep him. Uh, would I have been against keeping him? Absolutely not. But um, yeah, I think, you know, just getting him to a good, strong League One club who are going to be pushing for the top. I don't know how close yeah. they'll be, but they'll be pushing. He might not play straight away because Rotherham do have a good squad for League One, but I think sooner rather than later, Romani will break into that 11 and he'll make whatever position he plays, whether it's the right of a three or whatever, he'll make it his own. Uh, but yeah, as I've said, Matty Daly, um, Going to Hartlepool, who obviously had been covered for a little while last year. Um, so, a season long loan for Matt, it's his first loan away from town. Uh, what do you think of that, Ben? Do you think it's finally uh, sort of time for Matt to show what he's about? Uh, yeah, I mean, there was tweets going around uh, Hartlepool Twitter around signing Messi with the uh, massive news that broke today. And um, they tweeted about the Huddersfield line on Messi uh, in Matty Daly. And I think that probably is a fair shout, in all honesty. Um, I think Daly's proved what he can do in the Championship, so I think in League 2 he could be an absolute star. Um, Hartlepool have lost a lot of players from last season uh, that were massive for them going forward, and I think Matty Daly will be a, a massively influential player for them uh, this season going forward. Obviously, he can play in a in a wide range of positions, obviously he can he can play on the wider midfield. Um, he can play centre midfield, attacking midfield, and obviously he can play as a forward too. I reckon. Um, and he'll work in Hartlepool's system. Um, dare I say it's not too much different from the system that um, Huddersfield play. They play a three-five-two or a, a three-four-one-two. Um, two centre mids and attacking midfielder. Um, and I think Daly will fit into that very nicely. And I think he will be somebody that will be popping up a lot um, this season for Hartlepool. And, and I hope that he can help them stay up and provide a very good season for the fans in League Two. Um, and I mean, that perfectly moves us on to um, looking at tomorrow's fixture for when you're watching this Derby County. Um, where, where do we start with it, really, lads? I mean, obviously, today there's been talks that... Um, that they've they've given players blank contracts with the names on. Um, the contracts need to be signed by half past twelve today, or they need to be signed by half past twelve today. When you're watching this, 
uh, for them to be eligible tomorrow. We have little to no knowledge of who those players are. So what what, what do we think, lads? It really is a state of derby, isn't it? It's absolute chaos. I mean, I have never seen a championship football club or any football club in English football have this much news coming in and out per day. It's, I mean, it's absolute pandemonium. Like, like you said, where to start? I mean, um, town fans were knocking about on Twitter yesterday, so today when we were filming, saying, are we even going to get to Pride Park and sit on our seats for the first time in 18 months? Because have they got a squad? I mean, I've seen Derby fans saying that they're going to have to rely on, you know, their youth. It's just... It's, it's incredible. I mean, Mel Morris turning up with blank contracts and saying you need to sign these without knowing how much money you're going to get paid. No, I mean, no one would do that. And I just hope for the Derby fans' sake that it all just sorts itself out because it is quite, you know, I've got no affiliation with Derby um, and I'm thankful they uh, turned over leads on the, the LM Road. That's, you know, that's another story. Um, I just hope it gets better for them because it's just it's awful. Um, but I mean, let's let's focus on the positives. We're all going and we're absolutely buzzing. As are the other, I'm guessing three and three and a bit thousand Huddersfield Town fans. It's going to be electric, um, and I think I'll speak for all of us when we say we are expecting a win. And that's no arrogance. Uh, that's not being big headed. That's being completely realistic because. If we don't beat Derby, I'll probably go into hibernation and never speak on this podcast again. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, I just really hope we get our chance to um, put a benchmark down, um, play our football. I think uh, Carlos and I think it was Scott High on the presser, um, but little smile from Jack there, um, yesterday um, saying that their focus is on the game. Um, Derby will leave their problems off the field. We'll leave um, our kind of vision of their off-field problems off the field as well. We will play 90 minutes of football and the best team will win. Um, but really, it is going to be absolutely amazing to see the lads back out there. Um, I mean, last time we played, or last time I watched on the short town live, it was 4-0 against Charles on the 29th of February 2020. It's just, it, and it just feels like the world's come down since then. Um, and I think, not even from a football point of view, from a mental health point of view, I think it's important we do touch on this. Football is uh, a massive chunk of people's lives. And just to get that going again, just to get on that bus uh, and go to Derby and then maybe get rained on for 90 minutes and sing in the rain and then come back in happy spirits, whatever happens, it's going to be brilliant. Um, and I just cannot wait to see the lads again. Uh, I mean, you're both going, lads. How do you feel about it? Yeah, absolutely buzzing. Uh, just want to touch on just a little bit on what's actually going on at Derby because I think it's an absolute joke. I feel incredibly sorry for the fans. I want to say, it, I mean, Mel Morris and the EFL uh, ruining a football club. It's yeah, it's, but I won't say much more than that. I just feel very strongly about what's going on there. Despite no affiliation, I just think it's pathetic. But um, yeah. yeah, buzzing, buzzing because first league game. I wish I could say my last game was the four 0 but I just have flashbacks of Luke Hayden and ripping out his hairband. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, that's just how it is. So yeah, hopefully it's nice memories, and as you say, it really should be. There's no excuse for even a draw. To be perfectly honest, again, it's yeah. not being cocky. I'm sure Derby fans are expecting the exact same thing, but it should be, it should be two or three, really. To be perfectly honest. They don't have a centre half. I assume that won't change by tomorrow with the situation. What's going on? Uh, a bit of a familiar face. Richard Stearman was training before. Don't know what's going on there. Can't imagine he'll be getting a contract. Could be. Uh, people who are watching this could be laughing at me, looking at Twitter and seeing Richard Stearman sign for Derby by now. But I don't know. So what's the? Yeah, it's um, it should be. It should be a walkover. It should be the first time for. I think three or four seasons that we should start the season with the league campaign with a win and a, hopefully a convincing win at that. But yeah, as you say, really happy to be back. It, um, 
yeah, I'm sure people watching will, um, could be going as well. I'm sure they'll be feeling the exact same. Obviously, I went to Wednesday, but just being league, a competitive game, a proper, you know, you know what I mean, a league game watching yeah. town again. Uh, can't wait. I'm sure Ben's going to say the exact same thing as me, but I'll let you say a bit. Yeah, no, obviously, it's it, it's brilliant. Obviously, a cup game, there's nothing like it, but just getting back to a league fixture will just mean so much more, obviously. We will be one of the uh, the latter few clubs in England to have fans back in ground. Obviously, there was since towards the end of last season and at Christmas where uh, clubs across England, across the 92, um, had fans back in ground. Uh, obviously, we weren't one of them, so it will be the first time that universally, universally town fans can be back at a league game in, in 18 months, um, which it just is a, is a sensation that you can't really put into words. Um I mean, just just to touch on something quickly as well, lineups. Do we reckon? Um, do we reckon Scott I stays in that team? Do we reckon Sauber comes into that team? Do we reckon Jordan Rhodes comes into that team? What what are what are your thoughts on that, boys? I mean, you know what I'm going to say about Scott I. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, yeah, absolutely. I think Carlos has already said Tanani isn't ready, and I think he's the only person who is Scotty drops out for. Um, but yeah, I think I think the midfield stays the same personally. Um, but yeah, Jay Sarber and Rhodes, what are you thinking? Um, I mean, I was speaking to you earlier, and Sarber is one player who I just can't decide. Um, because you see Sarber and you see injection, you see pace, you see energy. Now, taking this game off face value, it should be quite a straightforward one. So I wonder if this one is the one where Carlos says, "Look, yeah, we'll throw him in." from the start and we will let him absolutely terrorise their left back because I don't even know who they've got. It'll probably be some 18 year old. Um this might be the start, this this might be the touch paper of the Sorbus season. Um and if it was I think if it was a harder opening like Fulham, if we had them at home on the first day, I think you bring them on in the on the sixtieth minute. But this is this is Derby County. This is a game where we can exploit this is the game where we can build up players' confidence. So, yeah, I would love to see Sauber from the start. Um, and I get the impression from you two that when Rhodes did come on on Sunday, he changed the game. Um, I think he had two very, very good chances. Uh, I think around the 90th minute, he had one free header, which just left me perplexed how he didn't score. Um, but he did make up with a beautiful beautiful penalty, as, uh, as Jack said so many times this week. Um, I'd love to see Rosie back. Um, why not? Why not throw him in there? Um, I think we do have a, bit, a little bit of licence without getting too complacent. So, yeah, to answer your question, Scott High, um, yeah, perfect. Starboy, get him in. Um, Sober on the wing and Rose up front, yeah, I do think so. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we're all in agreement then. I think Potentially, there's there's minimal changes that needs to happen from Chef Wednesday, if any. Um, I think the chef, the team that were fielded against Chef Wednesday, can play um and can be exactly the same in all honesty. But obviously, the inclusion of Rhodes and Sarber Thomas from the get go could potentially be massive factors in um in a win. Um, and yeah, I think that's that is where we're going to leave it for this uh, episode of the preview show. Um, touched on a lot of things. Lee Nichols, star of the week. Uh, we will be back next week to discuss, hopefully, a win um, and who gets it from this week's game, we say, as we're, we're filming this. Um, but, yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, I'm not going to pass it on to Jack so he can say signature uh, 100 subscriber line uh, after we hit that last week, um, which massive thank you to you all for subscribing. Um, it, it would just be calmer now for us to go back down under 100, but we are now going to push on to going on towards 200 subscribers. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. If you can like and share, as always, uh, it does mean an awful lot to us and we will see you next week for another episode. Bye, guys.